Good morning again. Good morning. The water system requests support for our effort to develop a proposal for enhancing the Cobb County, Cobb County Stormwater Management Program and a separate proposal to establish a stormwater fee to fund the program. Back in January, these initiatives were presented to the Board of Commissioners and the water system has been working on them throughout the year. Unfortunately, we have limited staffing available to work on these and our staff have had to be pulled off for these to um, address several urgent issues that have come, out, uh, come up throughout the year. Um, so these aren't new initiatives, they're ongoing, uh, but we would like to clarify that the board, that we have the board support to continue. Um, I also would like to clarify that these are two separate proposals, and at the end of the day, one could be adopted without the other. So our program, our stormwater management program could be enhanced, but we could keep funding it the same way we are doing today, or the stormwater program could remain the way it is today, and we could initiate a separate fee or we could do both or we could do neither. So just because one is adopted doesn't mean the other one has to be adopted at the end of the day. Thank you, Judy, I appreciate this. You know, considering all that's gone on this year, I appreciate the initiative of your department and this board to address matters pertaining to stormwater. I know this is something also that um, Commissioner Richardson has been working diligently on. And because of that, I would like um, to turn things over to her to make the motion for this particular item. Thank you, Chairwoman, and um, certainly appreciate all of your efforts, staff's efforts, the rest of the Board of Commissioners and their input and, and care on this issue, um, and, and the residents as well for making sure that this is um, a priority of ours. And uh, with that, I will make a motion to approve although i still do I, I will ask a question as well i don't know so, if i should um, ask now or we have a motion we'll get a second okay. and then um, we'll entertain discussion motion to approve second all right any discussion commissioner richardson i just want to clarify this is an approval of developing the proposals the two proposals correct just to continue with the development not to adopt anything at this time thank you very good commissioner burrell um, yes, um, this has been discussed for many years prior to anyone on this board, I know, and um, the agenda item specifically says they do not include upsizing pipes or flood recovery assistance. And I know we've had a lot of discussion on the September 7th flooding. Um, it, the, it also says the water system requests support for our effort to continue developing a proposal for enhancing Cobb County stormwater management program and a proposal to establish a stormwater utility fee to fund the program. So if we're going to do a study, we're going to have to fund it, if whatever option we, we choose, kind of like um, anything else. But um, you all know my position on the water transfer. Um, there's, that's money that is needed in water and um, should stay in water and rather than going to the general fund. Um, it may not cover all that we need to do on, on, uh, with the stormwater utility fee, but it, it needs to stay in water to fund what we can in stormwater. We also have approved um, an increase of 11% for water fees starting in January of next year, 22. So with that increase, with the water transfer, I can't support another utility fee. Thank you, Commissioner. Are there any other comments? Yes, Commissioner Gambrel. Um, I support what Commissioner Brohl said, but in addition, um, you know, the county has ARPA funds that we received, the $147 million that we could start something today with um, if the board would choose to do so. Um, in addition, several of our cities have a stormwater fee, um, and in talking with those residents, they don't know what they get for that fee. They don't see any tangible measurements of results of where that fee that they pay for is going to. You know, Cobb County is already short-staffed. Here we are wanting to take on additional programs without staffing. 
staffing has always been an issue. And then you can sit there and say, well, it's tied back to pay. Again, how are you going to find the staff to maintain this if we can't find the staff to begin with? And I know you can say, oh, well, then pay them more. But again, then everybody gets paid more and we keep the revolving door going. Um, so I can't support this. I do support the water system and, and the things that they do, but I do believe we have um, funding available that we could start addressing some of these issues. And also there is no measurable to justify this fee or tax, depending on how you look at it. Okay. Let me, I'm gonna let Judy respond to that before I take any additional Yes, comments. so I would like to, to clarify my understanding of how ARPA funds can be used. Um, I've had some discussions with the former head of GIFA that manages the Clean Water State Revolving Fund. And any projects that we use for ARPA have to have to comply with the SRF requirements. And my Can understanding you explain is some of what that acronym is? State SRF. Revolving Fund. Okay, thank you. Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Mm -hmm. So any project has to meet the requirements to qualify for that program, even though it's not under that program. And my understanding of any stormwater projects to qualify for that have to have a water quality component. So it can't be used for just repair of a stormwater pipe and, and or things like that, which is most of what we are doing today is repair of pipes that need to be repaired or replaced. So that's, that's some of the guidance I received when I was putting together my, my ARPA list. Um, I also was at a meeting, um, the State Association of Water Professionals where um, EPD came in and met with utility directors and they encouraged us to apply for, for the state ARPA funds to apply for water and sewer projects. So we have focused on water and sewer projects, but with the understanding if we could get ARPA funds to fund some of our planned water and sewer projects, that would then open up funding that we had for those projects that we could use for stormwater projects. Thank you for clarifying. Um, Commissioner Burrell and then Commissioner Richardson. Yes. Um, I would just like to um, also add that this what still would we still would not be able to go on private property and and perform maintenance or repairs or what have you. Um, but as we're looking at redeveloping our code, our zoning code, um, could a fee be established for developers rather than homeowners for this utility, Judy? We could look into that. I'm not sure if other, if other uh, governments have stormwater impact fees. I think that's what you would be talking about, an, um, mm -hmm. an upfront impact fee. Mm -hmm. I, don't know, um, I don't know if other utilities have done that or not. Well, I... Because a lot of concern is from development causing, you know, impervious to increase and, and runoff and stormwater issues. Um, you know, maybe something that we can look at if this study passes and also with our unified development code, something could be worked out through the zoning process or development fees, I mean development standards um, from Jessica, Jessica's department. That's, that's great. So one of the reasons that we would like to look at changing the fee structure for stormwater is because right now properties are charged for stormwater based on how much water and sewer they use, how much water they purchase. A more equitable way to charge for that is how much impervious surface you have. So as you mentioned, the big developments that have a lot more impervious surface than a property owner they would be paying a more equitable amount for stormwater than the property owners are if we if we change the way the fee structure is. But would this apply to commercial properties as well? Oh yes, yes. Okay. Would apply to everybody, every property that has impervious surface. Okay. Thank you. We have Commissioner Richardson, then Commissioner Sheffield, and we'll go back to Ku. To Commissioner Gambrell. Thank you, and um, just wanted to say that is kind of the point of engaging in this further development is consideration of all these options and other funding opportunities as well. Um, we know that there are a range of things. We know that there are also some new bills that have been signed, and that does open up some opportunities. And there are even some re looking at the interpretations of ARPA funds um, that some of our 
our federal um, representatives have been looking at as well. But in the meantime, um, I think it would be prudent for us to do some due diligence in terms of what an ongoing maintenance operational structure could look like for um, supporting uniquely situated stormwater issues. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Sheffield. Yeah. Thank you, Judy. You mentioned that. <clears throat> excuse me. You mentioned that other cities have the uh, the uh, stormwater fee. And while I know we can't pinpoint an exact amount, uh, what would you propose to be the fee for the average homeowner? I know that commercial businesses will also be impacted, but for the average homeowner, what would be the average? Um, so amount. if we changed nothing with our program, we kept the program and the funding we have today, uh, looking at the fee structure we have today, uh, the average homeowner that uses 5,000 gallons of water a month pay, will start, will pay $1.99 for stormwater in January when our new rates go into effect. Um, we have very, very preliminary numbers on what the fee would be. Um, and right now, I would say we are right around that $1.99 or less if we kept the services that, that we pay today. So would the average homeowner, if we again just did what we did today, it would, it would probably be slightly less than that $1.99, but we haven't finished the analysis. And will there be a separate account for the stormwater uh, fees? If we separated it out on the bill, Mm -hmm. and charged on impervious service, yes, we would work with finance to create a separate account to put that revenue in. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Gambrell. Okay, as far as the developer fee, um, and this is actually something that happened in my district, you know, I had residents um, watching the development. It was getting close to the point where the developer was gonna turn the subdivision over to the county and the developer, the builder, was putting storm or construction material down the storm drains. The homeowners reported it to uh, the inspector on site. The inspector turned around and said they didn't know anything about it. They didn't see anything. They took pictures. They sent it to me. I then called stormwater or water. Water said it's not their responsibility because the subdivision had been conveyed over to the county. We were having a significant storm event, and this was in, in March. Um, and it was thankfully our DOT road crew that I was able to call and they went and cleaned out every single storm drain basin in this development to prevent the construction debris from being washed down. So within the county we have an issue as far as when things are reported going back and holding the developer or the builder accountable for putting things into our storm drain that could have led to these type of incidents. So, you know, this is all great. Again, we're discussing this, but we've got internal things going on that need to be corrected to prevent this thing, these from even happening. And as far as an impervious surface fee, you know, our code currently specifies what percentage of impervious surface. And then the Board of Commissioners, when we do zoning, sometimes we approve additional impervious surface that exceeds. When a homeowner comes in to put in a pool, they are also required to put in mitigation um, um, for stormwater if they go above the 35% impervious if it's, a, if it's a residential home. So they already have to go above and beyond to mitigate stormwater. How are you then going to put a fee on homeowners that are within the code for impervious surface or have gone and put in mitigation factors. This also goes to our commercial entities that usually have to detain water at 110% of what the site would have generated. So again, I see this kind of being a slippery slope um, going forward. Commissioner, so, oh sorry, go ahead and respond, Judy. So um, stormwater utilities usually give credits if there are, is this mitigation on the property? So we set a fee, but then they can apply for a discount to that fee based on certain mitigation factors. And that's one thing that we would have to put together as part of this proposal is what would our, our stormwater credit manual to explain what those credits are, what's the maximum credit that, that a property can get. And that would apply to commercial and residential. 
Thank you, Judy. Commissioner Richardson. You answered my question. Thank you. As was stated in the agenda item, this is a, an agenda item to support development of a proposal to study this. And considering all of the issues that have been shared here today, I think we see why this matter does need to be studied because there are a lot of moving factors. But one thing we also know is that water is moving as well. There are people who are experiencing issues from stormwater today. And um, we've been kicking this can down the road of how we can better augment support for our stormwater system. And as was stated in our agenda item, in 2005, there was a consultant that completed a feasible, excuse me, feasibility study regarding a stormwater action plan. It is now 2021, and I believe there was not movement on that plan. So I would just ask commissioners that we not continue to kick this can down the road. I think we'll continue to see um, storm events that do have significant impact on our homeowners, but we can be armed with a tool that can help us um, be better responsive and even proactive in addressing those issues in support of this agenda item today. So with that, I ask for your support with Commissioner Richardson's motion. She had a motion, I believe it was second, seconded. If there's no further discussion, I'll go ahead and call the question. And the motion passes 3-2 with Commissioners Burrell and Gambrell in opposition. Thank you. Thank you.